uh, yeah. Okay, well, I am mic'd up as well as Joe Tagmeyer. He is behind the camera for a second to make sure that this is working. But you guys, we are back on the roof of Margaritaville, and I'm so excited to be up here. Um, things are just getting set up here, and it, we have a beautiful view of the restacked Starship. So, yes, Starship was stacked again this morning. Joe was out there, so he'll be able to tell us about what he was able to see. And hopefully it's running because we are not able to man the comments now. So Everybody. hello, everyone. Welcome, Joe. Hey, and thanks for having me again. how great is it to be back up here? It's unbelievable. I mean, the last time it was kind of uh, lucky happenstance. And this time it's a little bit more organized for us. So yes. it's pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. And we are just so ready for tomorrow. We want things to go well. We're going to be up bright and early. I think we'll get here at least 6 a.m. Um, and hopefully start coverage early for you because I know that you have SpaceX feed and Tim Dodd's feed and many streams. Yeah. So we are showing you this amazing view from the rooftop here of Margaritaville and uh, just a lot of changes in just the past day. Obviously, we thought that maybe the launch would be on Friday and that got delayed due to an issue with a grid fin actuator. So. Right. That has been replaced, as yeah. far as we know. Well, actually, it's kind of funny. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they replaced one, and then last night, they replaced the other three. So I think they just decided, let's just replace them all and not have anything to worry about. Well, and you might as well, because it's yeah. so hard to get in there. That's mm -hmm. why they have to de-stack. They have to take the hot stage ring off, and it becomes a big ordeal right. just to get access to the actuator, which is a fairly small component. Yeah, relatively speaking, I mean, can, can, Compared to the Starship, it's nothing. It's yeah. probably maybe like this big or so. But uh, as Ellie said, is you have to de-stack. You have to take the hot stage ring off. You have to have these gigantic man lifts that are, I don't know, almost scary when you see the people on top getting up yes. there and then, you know, fixing that. Oh, yes. I <laughs> took video yesterday while they were de-stacking and removing the hot stage ring of just these little workers right. in the crane lift or a cherry picker. And they're just so small compared to the rocket. So yeah. you were out there this morning for it being restacked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything good so far? Yeah, it was great. Last <laughs> night they, they replaced the parts. They got the uh, hot stage ring back on. And then about 7, 7.30-ish this morning, they decided uh, that was the time to start restacking. So I was able to see that again uh, from up close. I was uh, like literally watching it right there. Wow. And uh, I had a lot of people asking, how long does it take to restack? And I'm like, it's going to go faster than you think, maybe 20 minutes. And it was almost exactly 20 minutes. It was bam. Good information. And you'd think that they'd be pros at it by now because yeah. this has had so many desacks yeah, and restacks. I think restacks. this is the eighth or ninth time that they've done that. Unbelievable. But it proves that those Mechazilla, those chopstick yeah. arms work pretty well. Yeah. Yep. Although if you're up there close. Just a second, we're, we're live right now. Okay. Hey, I'll be right back. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> we're going live, guys. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, but I'm just so happy to be back up here. And I wanted to, to clarify a few things because uh, I guess some people were under the impression that this is a, a public <laughs> viewing point for Margaritaville. This is not. We have NASA space flight up here. We also have NASA. They're going to have their big the NX-25 high-powered cameras up here. And they've been kind enough to let me stream up here again tomorrow. Um, so this is limited access. We can't have everyone on the roof. That would just be too many people. And the roof is not rated for that. But I'm just so grateful that we have access to this spectacular view because I want you guys to be able to enjoy it too. So we're very grateful to be back up here at Margaritaville. And um, it's just, we're, the countdown begins. Yes, it does, it does. <laughs> and sorry I had to get called away, but speaking of Margaritaville, you know, they've been extremely accommodating for us. And uh, we were just working out some last minute details there, but, uh, uh, this is probably the place to be, and uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of good views here. And this is my first time actually staying here. So last time I was able to stream from here, but I wasn't actually a guest. It's a beautiful resort, uh, access to the beach, and it's just, it's a great place to stay. And a lot of my um, subscribers actually have views from the rooms that they're staying in. Some of them are on the 10th floor, and they have great views of Starship. Right. So even if you can't go on the roof, which probably can't yeah <laughs> you can still see it from your room maybe want to just tell your viewers that because i guess there's some confusion about who can be up on the yep, roof i just clarified oh, that okay. so just letting you guys know that but aside from that i mean the view today today would have been a great day exactly. to launch 
but tomorrow's supposed to be about the same. Yeah. Maybe slightly more cloudy, but I mean, there's no clouds in the sky, so it's right. gonna be perfect. Right, and so I saw just before we started this live stream that another TFR temporary flight restric restriction has been activated just in case for Monday. Yeah. So that could be a potential window if we do not uh, go tomorrow. But right. you think that SpaceX really wants to go tomorrow. Yeah, I think uh, they're, they're, they're highly incentivized to try to get this thing off the ground. Uh, not just because they want to get all the data and all that, but they have several other ships and boosters that they want to get up to, and they want to continue to get the data, but they also want to continue to progress to the next stage and the next stage and different milestones, and eventually there's going to be in-flight uh, in flight refueling or refilling, as Elon would say, uh, and there's a whole bunch of other things that they need to do, test the tiles, can they re-enter, catch it on the stand. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of things that they need to get to. Um, you know, so, it, and, and the TFR on Monday, that's a good thing, is if, depending on how deep they get into the countdown tomorrow and then they, if they have to scrub, uh, they have to replenish the cryogenics and the water deluge system depending right. on how much of that's used. And so having a couple of days and then trying again on Monday is perfect. Right, and w another unique thing about tomorrow is that they have a very short launch window, yeah. 20 minutes. So yeah. you have to assume that they're probably going to start an internal countdown much earlier than the 7 a.m. window. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they, they've got the published uh, a countdown. It's on the SpaceX side. and usually starts about two hours prior, but they're going to be very busy much before that. And uh, I think they're going to try to accelerate as much as possible and get to a point where internally they can hold knowing that they're ready to go and then right, right at seven o'clock if they can i think they're going to try to go do you mind just checking that the live stream is sure. working we have no one manning the live stream so i just want to make sure that if someone's watching that people can hear us people can see us mm -hmm. it's good to go okay and part of the reason we're hopping back on here is because we had over 70,000 views right. from our <laughs> live stream with spotty service down at Starbase yeah. yesterday. I'm amazed that we were even able to get any video out there because the service is so bad. So thank you to all of you from around the world who are tuning in and just uh, appreciate our coverage because we do this for you. I'm a full-time content creator, full-time YouTuber. Uh, you are too, I am basically. Too, much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we do this for you, and we want to get you guys the best content possible. And so we're not sure if we can score another uh, May Musk interview, but we'll, we'll you know, see. who <laughs> knows? Time will tell. Back in April, if you were not familiar, Elon's uh, mom, brother, and sister actually watched the first Starship launch from right up here, here yeah. which was incredible. Another big change is. I'm not on crutches. That's true, that's <laughs> so, true. Uh, that's, that's, that's a good thing, but I know that we're gonna be up bright and early, and um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other uh, pieces of news that we've had in the last 24 hours, or um, less than 24 hours. You were down there today, so right. I actually didn't go down to Starbase today. You went down there and you said that it was even uh There was crazier. a lot of people. The, the main highway that goes right next to the orbital launch facility and then terminates right on the beach was just packed with people lots of cars uh, everybody up onto the sand dunes and everything else taking pictures um, and it was just it was much busier than even yesterday right uh, which was really great to see um, but uh, you know, I think everybody's really hopeful for tomorrow. Yeah, I was noticing that the Starbase sign was completely covered yesterday right. by construction vehicles yeah. and all sorts of work. Actually, that is something that's of interest. Now, they do have a lot of the construction equipment all in front of where the Starbase sign is. So if you, if you do want to go out there, it may not be available to you because of the amount of the stuff. Yeah. But there were some very interesting deliveries overnight. And Tell me about that. What they are, um, as you know, that they have the launch tower right now. And of course, the Starship is stacked and, and all that. But the plans are for a second tower, and large parts of a second tower arrived last night. At least two of the beams that would be of the each of the sections, I think there's about seven or eight sections to make a tower. Wow. So they've already got half of what they need for one section. And then there was another part for the very top that had arrived. So, you know, I don't know if this is being shipped from Cape Canaveral because there's another one out there or if this is something completely brand new. So there could be a second launch tower. Uh, there will be, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And yeah. so can we say that pretty pretty concretely here? Yeah, I think uh, CSI, Starbase, uh, Lab Padre, they've talked about and they've shown some of the diagrams and wow. uh, blueprints of what that's gonna look like. Well, and I know that, you know, we've had 
over six months in between the launches. So we want a, a higher launch cadence right. for sure. I guess not quite over six months. Seven Has it months, been? Actually. Seven months, yeah. Seven months okay, will be so. on Monday. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so we don't typically want seven months in between right. these launches. We want to have as many launches as possible to get the data mm -hmm. and to, you know, this is just one small step we got to get to stage separation. Right. That's the goal for this next launch. But like you're saying, we got to test the arms. Right. I mean, there's so many things in this process right. that it's going to take some time. Right. And all of that has to happen for the HLS mission to the moon. Right. And, you know, right. as most of your viewers know they are on contract to take the astronauts and land them on the moon for the first time in 50 years. Well, and definitely some Dear Moon uh, crew members are here. I know that one of them is staying here at Margaritaville. Mm -hmm. I know Tim Dodd is in town, yeah. so that's very exciting. And stay mic'd up with me here. I'm actually okay. going to take this closer and try to do a bit of a zoom in here so that you guys can see okay. this just incredible view from up here. This is why I am choosing to stream up here and um, not actually going. If you see the beach there on the left, that's where a lot of people congregate at, at Isla Blanca Park. You're a little bit closer, but there is no service and you're not just going to have a spectacular view. So right. for your viewers wondering, we are just about six miles away from the orbital launch pad. If you were in Isla Blanca Park, you could be right about five miles. Uh, but both of them should be uh, safe and they're well outside of the exclusion zone. Yeah, so this is just a zoom in for you guys. Uh, definitely hit that like button if you like what you're seeing. And we are very excited for tomorrow. It's going to be a bright and early morning. And I'm seeing that NSF just started their live stream. Well, uh, Aren't they always live streaming? <laughs> they're always live streaming, but I don't know if they're doing special commentary right now or not. Right, right. Well, we just wanted to give you guys a look at, um, at where we are. Ross, thank you for tuning in. How many stories is the rooftop level? We are, there's 12 floors here and you have to take a staircase up to the top. So here is just the beautiful view that we are going to have. Um, and it really is so exciting. It's, uh, it feels like I don't know, a Super Bowl uh, for space here. Well, speaking of views, if those are interested, uh, I on X, I put some pictures. I flew a drone today out there outside of the exclusion zone, but with a high power zoom. And you can get views of the Starship from over the ocean and watching the waves coming in and the Starship uh, in the distance. Okay, stay right there for a second. Um, and I guess we will just wrap this up. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anything else. I know that we will be making a video or I will be making a video about Margaritaville and my stay here. A lot of you guys tend to ask me, well, where should I stay when I go down to Starbase? And I think in order to answer that question properly, I need to know kind of what experience you want. If you want to be as close to Starbase as possible, you're going to stay at Rocket Ranch and yeah, you're going to have... You'll have to want to be camping kind of. Right, right. So they do have a guest house. They also have some streamers for uh, air streamers for rent and you can you can camp there. So there's there's many different options. If you want to bring the family and enjoy the beach and have a resort experience, Margaritaville is a great spot. Yeah. I think it's important to also clarify, and this is part of the reason I didn't just hop down to Starbase today. There's actually quite a bit of distance in between South Padre Island, Port Isabel, Brownsville, and Starbase. And so uh, it's, it's a bit of a commute right. to Starbase from the island. And not only that, de depending on the time of day you go, it took me about an hour and a half to get back last night right. because of all the traffic leaving there's a checkpoint on the way out so things to keep in mind that you may not be aware of if you haven't been here and the main road that connects basically brownsville and uh south padre island uh, is usually two lanes each direction but it's down to one because there's some heavy construction uh for a new uh, liquid uh, uh like a methane plant uh lng plant right there that's and that's a time stoplight right yeah and that's been there for couple months now yeah. at least okay so but uh so anyway traffic may be an issue yeah <laughs> take that into account but the good news is that the road is actually finally pretty improved i mean there's still some <laughs> there aren't potholes as big as my car yeah. like it was last time <laughs> okay but um so we will be up here tomorrow uh if you aren't able to watch us live definitely please consider replaying the stream because yeah. it's just a different experience from from up here and uh but if you can join us live i think we'll start probably around what do you think no later than 6 30. i was gonna say 6 30 is probably earlier yeah. yeah 
So definitely at 6.30, have your alarm set and join us for hopefully another great day in history. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just get the view one more time for you guys here. Actually, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a view here. So this is kind of what the roof looks like. And right across from us here, this is the Sapphire Hotel. So uh, much taller. I'm not exactly sure what their roof situation is, but you would have a great um, view from that hotel. But I just love it here at Margaritaville. And uh, let's see, someone here wants to know, Guy wants to know, are there plenty of superchargers for your Tesla? So one thing I didn't know until I stayed here um, is that uh, they do have, I don't know, can, can they see me here? Uh, they do have chargers for your Tesla here at Margaritaville, which is awesome. Um, I've been charging my car and so that makes it a lot more convenient because the nearest supercharger to here is it's right behind you. <laughs> Right, but like, but like the the fast ones. Yeah, the it's fast. in Brownsville. It's about 20 minutes away. Right. So the the fast chargers are about 20 minutes away, but the one that I didn't know they had it here. So yes, if you have a Tesla, there are options here, and that makes it a lot more convenient because charging is the last issue you want to have when you're out here. So um, thank you guys for tuning in and thank you for watching all of my coverage. I dropped a video this morning, so if you haven't been able to watch it, it features some really awesome interviews with people who have traveled here from around the world. So definitely more journalism. Um, yes, oh, okay, so let's, let's just, let me just show you something that we're noticing here. So this is the high powered camera that I was talking about that we showed you last time. This is the MX-25 and the zoom on these is absolutely incredible. So tomorrow before the launch, we'll be sure to show you what the displays look like. And this is actually a uh, part of NASA's effort to capture this launch, not NASA spaceflight, actually NASA. So this camera is, I don't even know how much money, but it, it, it can zoom quite uh, incredibly. And it's not just zoom, there's also other, other effects, right? Yeah, I think they have infrared near yep. and far as well as the optical zoom. So pretty. And of course tracking. Pretty cool. So any other questions that you're seeing from folks? Um, again, we really appreciate the support here and we're just crossing our fingers because I know that, you know, yesterday's events were kind of unexpected, but it sounds like it's not a huge issue. So we are hoping that everything works out and hope that you can join us in the morning. Awesome.